guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i am actually going to do something a little bit different than what my videos normally are so today i'm actually going to do a cook with me series i don't know i'm gonna do a series if you guys like it maybe i'll do a series i don't know obviously you guys know i am a busy person i have three children and i have a social life and I like to do things but obviously i have to cook but it's one of the things that I absolutely love to do. I do love to cook. I grew up always having a home cooked meal from my mom who also worked and then came home and made dinner for us. So we always sat down and had a proper dinner. So it's something that I grew up with. So I wanted to make sure that my children had the same kind of environment and feel and appreciation for food as I do. So it's just something that I make it a priority to cook at least, I would say at least four to five times a week. Usually on the weekends, those are the days where I'm tired and I want to go out to eat. So I usually try to cook, like I said, about four to five times a week, maybe more depending on my mood. So today I wanted to cook a fast and easy meal for you. This is something that I make when I can't think of something else to make. And it's super easy and that's why I wanted to share this with you. So let's get started. First thing first, I am going to show you a fish. If you don't like fish heads, look away now and just know that when you go to the seafood market, just ask them to remove the head of the fish. But I'm gonna share this with you, so look away like I said. So I had to do a little bit of cutting, but I bought a hobalu. Yeah, hobalu. And I think in English it's a sea bass, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll double check and I'll put it in subtitles below if it is a sea bass, but I think it is. Anywho, this is a, a fish that is actually readily available here. And it's one of the fish that I just absolutely love. It's a white fish and it's really meaty. Like you can tell it's a pretty, it's a pretty thick fish, but you can buy smaller versions but I usually like tried to buy the larger one because my family enjoys it. If you like Dorada, I actually prefer this to Dorada only because I feel like this is um, firmer fish. So it feels a little bit more filling than Dorada. Anyway, so normally I cook with the head on, but my, I'm going to air fry this. So it didn't fit in my air fryer because this one is a ginormous fish. It's 1.5 kilos. So it's a pretty big fish. And normally the size that I usually get is maybe no more than a kilo. Actually, usually less about maybe a half a kilo to three fourths kilo. So anyway, so what I did was I just cut off the head. So next thing you need is an air fryer. I am actually going to air fry this and that's why this is so easy. What happens if you don't have an air fryer? If you don't have an air fryer, you can definitely put this in the oven and roast it. But I just prefer the air fryer because it makes the skin so crispy and I don't have to think twice about it. So this one here is the Ninja Foodie Grill. I did buy it here in Portugal. If you're American, you're probably familiar with this brand because a lot of people either have an Instapot or they have the Ninja Foodie pressure cooker. I saw this grill because I bought it for my mother, even though I had the Instapot, and she raved about it. So I had to buy it when I got over here because we found, or I realized that I was air frying things a lot more than I was pressure cooking. So I wanted to invest in a really good one and since she recommended it, I had to buy it. So this here is super easy. I don't know if it'll show up. Maybe it will. Let me see if I can go closer. Don't mind the dirtiness, the knuckliness, but you have your power button, you have your air fry, you have your roast, grill, bake, reheat, and dehydrate. All these different functions, you can set the time, you can set the, the temperature and everything, and you just press start and it does all the work for you. So that's why I absolutely love. So I'm gonna try to record this. I hope you guys can see. The only thing that I season this fish with is olive oil, which I like this Gallo brand, and I usually get the subtle. I don't know if, I can see, if you can see it, but I get the subtle version just because I don't like to taste too much olive oil in my food, but this is the brand I usually get. And then I get sea salt. So this one's actually coarse sea salt. I forgot the exact brand that I bought, but you can find this thick sea salt. And usually it's for like grilled meats or whatever. So like I said, I have the head here. I am going to cook it because there is some meat still on the, the head. And I am going to pat this dry with some paper towels on the inside and the outside. I want to liberally add olive oil and the sea salt all inside. So 
So when I received this fish, I actually washed it before I show you guys the fish. So you just want to make sure this is a nice dry fish to work with. So just make sure you pat it dry. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the olive oil all over the fish. And don't worry, things are going to get a little bit messy here, but that's okay because that is cooking and you're going to wipe off this counter anyway. And I'm just going to make sure that we use up all this olive oil. Usually I'm not this messy, but it's okay. Now I'm going to wash my hands because I don't like it being all oily. All right, so now I'm going to go in with my salt. And you can use your hands. I usually just use my a spoon and I use the other hand to kind of guide it through. And I'll flip and I'll salt the other side too. It might look like a lot of salt, but actually this fish does need it. Otherwise, it really doesn't penetrate through. It's not like table salt. Same thing with the fish, but again, we only eat that little tiny, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of meat right there, and that's the only thing that we kind of want this head for. And that's it. All I'm gonna do now is put this in the air fryer, and you'll see how delicious it is. So what I'm gonna do now is preheat this air fryer to, I think it's 200 degrees Celsius, and then we'll put it in. All right, so now this is ready. It just says add food. You're just gonna open it up. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna line it with some parchment paper and then put the fish in. All right, so what I did was I opened it up, put some parchment paper in and put the fish in now too. So I'm just gonna tuck this parchment paper in because I don't want it to hang over. Obviously I cut it all wrong. So I'm just gonna tuck it in and then close it up. And just be careful because now this whole area is hot. Yeah, and that's it. And now I'm gonna let that cook for about 25 minutes. Usually when I open it up and I see that it's nice and golden brown on the top, I'll sometimes flip it over midway through so I can get the golden part on the other side too, but it just really depends on my mood to be honest. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this mess that I created and then we're gonna work on the shrimp next. So in here, I have about half a kilo of large shrimp. Let's see, so it's large shrimp here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the heads and then also remove the um, shell too. You can definitely cook with this intact, but my children are very, very picky so I usually do this for them anyway. I'm gonna tell you a little trick. I'm gonna show you a trick what I do um, just to remove the shell because, I mean, who likes to do this? Nobody. So you just remove the head and you take a fork. You're gonna go right underneath the skin and you just remove this way. And therefore, this kind of already starts to open up the shrimp so you can wash off the veins on the inside. And then I just remove the, the peel just like that. And I like to leave the little tail on because it's easier for the kids to pick up. So I'm kind of doing this like somewhat slow for you guys so you can see but see how it kind of already has that insert? So it's already kind of peeled for you, so you can just wash this part off. Let me do it again, and hopefully you guys can see. So I remove the head, I go underneath the shell, and then push the fork through the shell until you get to the other side. Then it opens up that um, the shrimp for you. So now you can just peel that whole shell off. Now you're left with a shrimp like this. You're just going to wash this part off again. So this is what I'm going to be working on.
All right, so it's already been cooking about 14, no, yeah, 14 minutes, I guess. I'm gonna look on the inside and this is what it looks like so far. So it's cooking away and it's doing really well. It still has some more time. So obviously we're gonna cook it for another 10 minutes and then I think it should be done. So my little munchkin wanted hey. to help. You are my munchkin. And so what she's going to do is she's going to cook the shrimp. This is super easy. Our first trip to Lisbon, our first trip to Portugal, to be honest, my husband and I, we went to a restaurant and we wanted shrimp. <laughs> Sorry, that is my rice cooker. It's telling me that it's done. Anyway, so we had our first dinner in Alfama and we tried these piri piri shrimp with garlic, it's a garlic piri piri shrimp. It's very common here and we were in love. I think that was almost one of the reasons why we moved to Portugal because the shrimp was- So I wanted to recreate that and I think I have it down to the T. Obviously I like mine a little bit spicier but I can't because my children don't like that spicy of foods. So obviously but I have to reduce the tolerance. Mommy, down. after you cook it, you can add more spice for yours. That's true, I could, but- You can keep it in and in the pot and then add some more. That's smart. But, you know, for you and Chloe. No, like, you put your stem up to it and then you Oh, and recook it? I guess I could do that. Yeah. But anyway, so if you like more of a spice or you guys enjoy spicier foods, just add more cayenne pepper to it. So what we're gonna do is start off getting a pot. I have my shrimp that I already peeled and deveined. What you're gonna need are these ingredients. You're gonna need your butter. I usually like this salted butter from Lidl. It's my go-to when it comes to baking or cooking. I love it because I love the flavor. I have this house seasoning. So this is a mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And I added some dried parsley to it too, but you can always change it up. So the ratio is, let's just say, half of it is salt. Then you're gonna do a quarter of it is garlic powder, garlic powder, and a quarter would be, um, black pepper and then you just shake it up. That's all you need. You also need garlic, peeled, chopped up, diced up garlic. What I usually do is I spend like, I don't know, 20 minutes and I peel the garlic and put it in my food processor. Then I lay it flat and freeze it. So that way I don't have to dice up garlic often. So I'm gonna show you everything in this pot now. Oh, and also one last thing, you're gonna need your olive oil. So let's get started. Sorry if it's moving around a bit. I have to hold this because my tripod just kind of broke on me. Anyway, so I'm gonna add some olive oil, which is about that much. I've already turned it on, so obviously you can see it's really warm. We're gonna add the butter now, Lily. This one? Yep, go ahead and put it in. Yeah. You might need to use your hand. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, it's a little warm. So I'm gonna reduce down the temperature. And now we're gonna add, oh, yeah. we're gonna add some garlic. And that's probably about two, maybe three, three uh, cloves of garlic. Go ahead and add the shrimp now, please. Can I pour it? Yes. I'm scared. Oh, no, no, actually, no, no. Can you just take it out one by one, please? Because there's some water in it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm Keep adding it. That's fine. All right, so we have all that. I'm gonna put that in. We're gonna put a little bit of our, our seasoning, which is maybe a teaspoon of seasoning. Of course, adjust to your taste. And now what we're gonna do is add the other seasonings, like the piri piri, well, you can add piri piri, but I actually don't. So what I'm gonna add to this now is a little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of smoked paprika, and then I'm gonna add some parsley at the very end. So how much do I add? I usually add maybe a quarter to a half a teaspoon. I usually just eye it and of course, adjust to your taste. Obviously the cayenne pepper is spicy, so you're gonna add a little bit more or less or omit it if your family doesn't like it. Now I add the paprika, this is smoked paprika. I usually add the same amount, so about a quarter to a half of a teaspoon. It's just really for the color. And I'll add the parsley kind of towards the end. Well, right now, because the shrimp is already cooked. So this is what it looks like at the very end. So we're just gonna let this cook for maybe another minute, but again, the shrimp is already cooked, so you don't really have to cook it. 
I'm just reheating it and making sure that everything blends together taste-wise. And that is usually kind of like our side dish. And we just cut up some lettuce from the garden, so that's gonna be fresh, and I'm gonna wash this right now. All right, let's check on the rice. I also bought this rice cooker here in Portugal. It is definitely way more expensive here than it is back in the States, but if you want a really good rice cooker, then this is the brand that you wanna get. So I just click on this, and the rice is nice and fluffy. This is jasmine rice, which the only brand that I have found to be actually true jasmine rice is this one brand. Let me go get it. This is the brand that is most like the actual jasmine rice back in the States. The other brand that we buy is like a continent brand, which tastes more like a basmati rice than actually soft jasmine rice. So I highly recommend this brand if you're looking for something similar to the ones that we have back in the States. All right, let's check on this fish. It has another six minutes left. So far, so good. Look how nice and brown this fish is. Let's check to see how flaky it is because I don't want it overcooked. Nobody wants that. Okay, the best way for me to see if it's done is just taking a little bit like a fork and just going right underneath to see if it's flaky and juicy. And to me, I think it's done actually. I might give it another minute, but oh, did you hear that crisp? Oh, that was crispy. I might give it one more minute, but again, you don't want it to be overcooked. And there you have it. That's the shrimp that we made earlier, the rice, and this crispy fish too. We're gonna let this kid try the shrimp. Is it good? And of course my little helper needs to try too, right? Yeah. Like a lollipop. It's a little warm. But that's hard. Mmm. Yummy? Mm. Well, that's a big fish. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. It's a little bit different than before. And if you do, let me know. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Ciao.